This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and it's just about getting dark, so I don't know if you can tell or not, but the sun went down over the hill. We're in the valley here, and we have the stream, so it's already started to chill in here. Now it's springtime, so we're taking advantage of the temperature at night to cold smoke some cheese. Now, I looked in my refrigerator the other day, and lo and behold, no smoked cheese, and that is probably my favorite smoked food that I actually make. Some people, they like, you know, brisket. I, my home favorite is smoked fish, like salmon or trout, but my all-time favorite is smoked cheese. Today, we're gonna go ahead and use the Big Chief. First thing is, is we're not gonna plug it in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use an amazing smoke tray to smoke that with. Now, you could use a lot of different wood chips and it depends on the amount of smoke flavor you wanna go with. I'm gonna use pecan and the reason is is because I'm gonna hit it with a little bit longer smoke than I normally would because I'm gonna leave it out here overnight and I want the smoke to be a little milder but I wanna run it a little longer. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that going. Now I have some of this Barbecue Delight pecan pellets here and there's a couple different ways you can do this. Easiest way is if you can get this thing in here is to fill it up the way you want it. Just a little too much. And just like that. So I'm gonna get a little closer here so you can see that. What I've done is I've filled it two thirds. It's running with this pecan pellet about three hours per line, maybe just a little bit less. So it will get about eight hours for the whole tray, especially depending on how well it starts. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna light this and uh, I'll get it going and then um, set it aside so that way it can get started. I left this outside. Today it wants to work, but the last couple of times it didn't. So lucky me. The trick is here is you just want to hold the torch on, but if you want to do it even more efficiently, a benzene torch, like a plumbing torch, works really well. Um, these uh, brulee torches work great, uh, but they could be a little more powerful. Another trick is after you get it lit, you can hit it with a low, a hair dryer on low setting, or you can use any device that blows air on it. I'm going to show you really quick what I mean. I have this little um, electric smoke generator and you put, smoke, uh, put wood chips in there and light it. If I put that on there just like that, this thing will blow and get going. Gonna see if this will light again. Oh, it only lights once, that's great. So the idea is, is that the electric blower is blowing oxygen on the pellets and getting them going. Now, like I said, you can point a little hair dryer on that, or you can uh, use a, even a yard blower on low will do really well too. I'm not gonna sit there and blow on it. I'm gonna leave that there for a minute while we move on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open the top and take a little look in here and see what we've got. You can see that we have the foil tray in here from last time we used it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move that up one, and I'm gonna move this up one. Reason is, is that we want a little bit better air circulation down here near the bottom for the pellet tray. Now I'll set this down for now, and then we'll move on to the next thing. 
And I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and let it burn for a minute. You can see that it's, uh, it's going good enough that it's going to get uh, burning really good just like that. Nice little breeze will help get it started too. I think it'll go in just a little better than that. So if it doesn't kick up in a minute or two, actually, I'm going to go ahead and let it go a little bit longer because like I said, I want it going better than that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some cheese. I uh, keep it real simple. Normally, I would uh, throw on Swiss, which is my new favorite. But when I went to the store, they had some of this on sale. And uh, so I don't normally buy this brand. I normally buy a generic store brand, which is great to smoke, especially the extra sharp. And then also my new favorite is Swiss, but I didn't buy any today because the brand that was on sale didn't come in Swiss in this size. And one of the really nice things about this is that this slices up perfectly for a club cracker, which I really like. And uh, if you want smaller finished pieces, you can make smaller finished pieces. Remember the smaller your block of cheese, the less amount of time you need to smoke it. So I'm gonna set the cheese to the side for a second. Now we're gonna use one tray and one grill mat, and I'm gonna stand the cheese on its side. I brought just a generic paring knife out with me. You don't need anything special. I'm just gonna to toss this wrappers to the side, and then uh, I'll clean it all up when I'm done. Go ahead and fast forward through this. All right, I'll go ahead and show this to you here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this a little bit closer to the center. I want the cheese to smoke as uniformly as possible. And then I'm gonna go ahead and load it right here. So I put it down on the second shelf. So now I've got this raised up and this there, and I'm gonna go ahead and load it into the smoker. Be really careful not to spill it. This is kind of hard to do from above like this. When you load this tray, always tilt it a little bit of an angle and push the first two feet against the one side, and then the other feet will just go straight in. It's the same thing for putting on the lid. Push the lid against the one side, and then boom, straight down in just like that. Now we've got this tray going, and it could be going just a little bit better, but I think it's gonna work out. I'm gonna blow on it a couple times here. I'll get over here so you can see this. When you can blow on it a couple of times and it starts right up, that's a good sign. We'll go ahead and move it over here while it's still going. So now the pan has been removed and this is not plugged in, remember that. I put it in here and I push it against the side so that way the part that's burning is not against the edge. And then I load it in there just like that and like that. My goal here is that I want the smoke to go in, but I also want to keep the door slightly open, maybe just a little more than that. And the smoke is gonna work its way up through there almost instantly, but my main goal is, is I want good airflow. And you see that the air is blowing sideways. The creek tends to blow the air down like this uh, when it's cooler, like at night and in the morning. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take this little block of wood, and I'm just gonna put it just like this. Now I recommend that you use something like a brick or something, but the whole goal was to cut back a little bit of the airflow, not all of it, so don't put it in there too tight, so it gets good airflow, but we don't want it blowing sideways. 
Now, if you look here at the top, I don't know how well you can see this, but I can see it perfectly well. It is just coming out, smoking away, especially on this side. So that's all there is to this. I'm gonna go ahead and let this smoke overnight and it is starting to really get dark out here. And uh, again, we still have a little bit of the ambient light around, but not much. It'll be dark in about 30 minutes and uh, this stuff will just sit out here and do its thing overnight. So I will be back here in the morning. For you, that'll be like five seconds. It's morning time and we are here to check how everything went. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull out the pellet tray. Now, of course, last night before I went to bed, right before it got truly dark, I popped my nose out here to make sure it was burning correctly, and it was. You can see that it's all burned up there and it's all completely ash. I'll just dump that in the fire pit when we're done here. I'm going to set this aside. And it looks like it took on a lot of smoke. I'm going to go ahead and put on a glove just because I don't want my hands to get all covered with smoke. But it's not necessary. You don't really, with cheese, you're not really too worried. Uh, I'll point out that it's really cool out here this morning and if it were a little bit warmer, I would have wanted to get out here a little bit sooner, but I just sat inside and had a cup of coffee and watched the news. All right, that came out with no problem. And uh, there's a lot of smoke on there. This smoker is well seasoned. I'm just gonna set this down out of camera right here. And then, I'm going to get rid of all this and I'll be right back. I went ahead and put the smoker away and uh, I still have the tray out, but I'd like to get this uh, tray rack back in there. And I just set it all down inside a cookie sheet. That's the nice thing about these is that they fit conveniently inside there. And then once it's in there, then I can just remove this and put it down here on the rack. If everything is all clean, it's just smoky, then you can just put it right back inside the smoker. If it's got food debris on it, I take it inside, lightly brush it, and put it in the dishwasher by itself with other smoky things or frying pans and whatnot. I wouldn't normally mix it with something like uh, plates and stuff like that because the smoke will transfer, but sometimes I will run a short wash cycle and then run a full wash cycle with the regular amount of soap and everything to completely clear it off. Now here we have all the cheese and I'm just going to point this out to you really quick because it all looks pretty similar because it did take a pretty good amount of smoke. So we have the two mild cheddar here, the two pepper jack here, and the sharp cheddar here. Sharp cheddar of course is my favorite but we're just going to take this and move it all to the side except for one of the pepper jack, and I'll explain that in a second. So the reason we're gonna go ahead and uh, use the pepper jack is because it you can see it really easily. Don't cut directly over the grill mat because you'll cut it and damage it. So here's the thing, is that what we're gonna do right now, you should not do. What you need to do is rest your cheese in your refrigerator for at least seven days, preferably 10. So I'm gonna come up to the camera so you can get a good look at this. So what I want you to see here is that it's still white on the inside, but it has a nice dark ring around the edges from the smoke. But here's the thing. The smoke probably hasn't penetrated to the center at all, and we're gonna test it to find out. Again, don't do this because this will make you think that your cheese is no good. It needs time to rest.
I gotta tell you, if I was desperate and I had a party tonight, I would serve that. And the smoke is just a touch bitter around the edges, but that will mellow out. But in the middle, so I'm gonna break this in half. And I don't know if you can see that, but in the middle, it's completely white. So I'm gonna take a little bite right there. And in the middle, it's almost no smoky flavor. So all the smoke is on the outside edges. So I'm gonna put this one back together so that way when I rest it, so it's touching, now I'm going to show you one more thing here. My favorite way to rest the cheese is with parchment paper. Usually you have one side that's a little slicker than others. And uh, it looks like that this is the side that's less slick. So I'm going to put that side down. I'm going to grab this block of sharp cheddar here. I'm going to put it in here. Just like that, at a slight angle towards the corner, I, do. I want it completely on the paper, so that way when I wrap it, it will roll. I'll move this over just a little bit. Once I get past half, I go like that. Fold both corners in. Now this is gonna do two things. Just like if you use parchment paper to wrap your meat, your parchment paper will breathe a little bit. Um, and that's kind of important to help keep the cheese aging and mellowing out for that week and a half. Uh, the other thing is, is that this makes a really nice packaging. So you can take and put a little piece of blue tape on this. And if you don't like blue painter's tape, if you don't put the slick side to the inside, the tape has a hard time sticking, so you might need to wrap it all the way around um, so it touches itself. But this right here is a perfect wrap and it just looks really nice. What I normally do for storage is I normally take a good old freezer bag and I just set those in there. Gonna set the two mild cheese in first. And this is only because I cut this one. I'm gonna put this one in the middle. Put this one here. Make sure that's all pressed together because I want those edges sealed up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in here. Normally I would set it to the side, but we'll just go ahead and put it in here because we just need to rest with the tab side down so that way it doesn't open up. And then deliberately, I'm gonna leave some air in here. I want enough air that it will circulate around the cheese but not around my refrigerator. So that's pretty much it. That is the whole process. It was really simple and really easy and you can do this. You could even do this without a smoker. All you have to have is some pellets and one of these trays. I think that most of the packages when you buy the tray comes with the first full load of pellets. Uh, but I'll tell you right now that this just works great. I don't know about the generic trays. I haven't bought any of those. Um, but hold on one second right there and I'll show you a couple that I have bought. I have these two here, and this one is a spiral, and it works really good for things like sawdust. Pellets work okay, but I think that the, there's not enough pellets all in one place for it to work good. And I didn't try it in the pellet smoker with the pellet smoker running. I might give that a try because the pellet smokers force air in. This one here, I use in the pellet smoker all the time, and this one actually works the best. But the one thing that you do want to do is 
it's got an open end there, so you fill it up all the way and then put it on a rock or something so it stays up like this, or you could use a pellet tr you know, tray in there. And by just setting it like that, let's see if I can get a good look at this. By setting it just like this, you'll get an angle like that. I'm not sure how well you can see that, so I'll go ahead and take a picture and we'll just pop it right up here for you. The idea is that the pellets stay pushed against each other while they're burning and then it'll keep burning all the way down. If it's faced like this at all, the part that's burning will actually fall away from the unlit pellets and it will stop burning. Now, I've tried this with wood chips and had no success. That doesn't mean that it wouldn't work if you had a well-ventilated area. I just think that these things are designed for pellets. I think we've covered everything here. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip away to a little video that I'm making next week. And you can go ahead and check that out and you can see what the finished product looks like. It has been eight days and now we're gonna take a look at the cheese. So this is the package here, just the way I put it in the refrigerator. I just pulled it out a minute ago. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Oh, it smells good. This is the one that I wrapped in parchment paper. We'll set that aside and open that last. And then we have one of the pepper jack. Here's the pepper jack that I already cut. And then here is one of the blocks of medium cheddar. The other block is in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one. And I'm gonna show you this. Let's hold that up there. And you can see a little bit of color around the edges, but because it's cheddar, it's really hard to tell where the smoke ends and begins. That is absolutely perfect. For me, I could have gone just a little heavier on the smoke, but for the average person, this is gonna make them very happy. So let's set that aside for a minute. Now this is the pepper jack, and this is the side that I cut previously, and this is the side that I'm just cutting today. And there's not a lot of difference, but you can see it's a little lighter in color on the fresh cut side. I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite of that. That is absolutely perfect. Again, for me, I could have gone a little heavier on smoke, but for you and everybody else, this is probably perfect. And that's about, um, probably about five to six hours worth of pellets in the pellet tray. I'll set this one aside and let's go ahead and open up this one. Now again, the parchment paper makes a really nice wrapping for gifts. This is the sharp cheddar and out of this batch, sharp cheddar is usually my favorite. So when I cut it, I let the knife slip just a little bit, but you can tell that the cheese is actually a little drier than it was on the inside than when I first put it in the smoker. That is really good. This is generic cheese right here. These other ones are brand name cheese that was on sale. So I went ahead and bought those. Normally I would just buy store brand generic and take it to the next level by smoking it. Now, if you look at that, you can't really see much of a smoke ring. You can see the color on the outside edges just a little bit, but the smoke ring really doesn't show up much, but you can taste it all the way through and it's mellow. So there's no bitterness that rests in the refrigerator. And this is eight days that rest in the refrigerator has totally mellowed out the smoke. So anybody will enjoy this. So thanks for watching. The links below are affiliate links. So if you use those, I will get compensated and I do appreciate it. 
Have a great day.